A judge has sunk Carrie Lake's hopes of overturning her loss in Arizona's gubernatorial election, uh, leaving her once again adrift in a raft of murky legal arguments and very deep, deep conspiracy theories. Uh, now, in a decision that was made on Saturday, Maricopa County Superior Court Judge Peter Thompson, who was appointed by then Republican Governor Jan Brewer, found the court did not find clear and convincing evidence of widespread, of alleged widespread misconduct that Lake uh, had said affected the result of the 2022 general election. And of course, the reason that she didn't there that they didn't find any clear and convincing evidence is because that evidence does not exist. I know. Shocker, right? But that didn't stop Lake from demanding that she be appointed governor anyway, because who cares about elections? I mean, who cares about who actually won? Just declare yourself the winner anyway. And that's how it works now. So her lawyers claim that the problems with ballot printers at some polling places in Maricopa County which, by the way, is home to more than 6% of Arizona's voters, were evidence themselves of fraud. Oh, see, we had problems, so those problems were obviously man-made and manufactured, as if nothing has ever broken down before. You know how our election infrastructure is old, right? That there's not enough investment by the states and by the federal government in our election process, in, in our infrastructure. But using, apparently using the fact that we have old infrastructure that a lot of our states, again, in the federal government refuse to fund correctly, using the breakdowns as a result of that as proof of voter fraud, it, it's super ridiculous. But anyway, another uh, thing that Lake had uh, claimed, or Lake's lawyers, is that problems with ballot printers, I'm sorry, uh, the chain of custody for the ballots was broken because they had been taken to an off-site facility where they say that a contractor that had scanned mail ballots to prepare them for processing had actually put their own mail-in ballots into the pile rather than sending them through normal channels and that the paperwork documenting the transfer of ballots is allegedly missing. Now, the county says, actually, no, that didn't happen. We have all the evidence. They don't have evidence that there was anything wrong. Uh, in fact, the whole issue here and the reason that Carrie Lake had lost is because they didn't have evidence to support their claims. See, there's this thing that where you go to court, you're supposed to provide evidence. If you don't provide evidence, well, then you're not going to in the case. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I, that's, it seems to be rather simple. But, you know, if you don't care about facts, if you don't care about reality, if all you care about is power, well then, and if you're arrogant to think that you don't need facts anymore because you're living in a fact-free bubble, well then I guess you're going to continue to pursue your nonsense cases. So now, the one thing that Carrie Lake uh, had done, instead of presenting evidence, is to call in experts. And of course, those experts, so-called experts, made claims of things that either couldn't be proven or were things that were not nefarious. That's it. Uh, and so one witness, for example, who examined ballots on behalf of uh, Carrie Lake's campaign discovered 14 ballots that had 19-inch images of the ballot printed on 20-inch paper. So, now the result of that is that the ballots wouldn't be read by a tabulator. So now, okay, there was a printer issue. So, the thing is, the county says, well, all the, uh, we found them all, and so what we did is we duplicated them, and then you know, on the correct paper, and then ran them, and they all counted. So now this uh, witness says, no, 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 they broke it intentionally. And then 
after they broke it intentionally. They then duplicated the ballots. And so these ballots got counted twice. And those ballots, well, they happened to have gone to my opponent, Katie Hobbs, instead of me. Well, how do you know that all of those ballots were for your opponent and not for you? Again, when you start to ask questions about these conspiracies and really drill into them, you realize there's a lot of holes in them. But if you're not asking questions, if you're not drilling into the details, then you're, you know, led away with the possibility that, oh my God, that's it. They had to have cheated. There's shenanigans going on here. There's issues. Now that same witness said uh, that a person had changed those printer configurations. This was a tech employee and they used a shrink to fit feature as part of their troubleshooting of, surprise, surprise, other election related issues because again, our infrastructure is terrible. Now the county actually said about 1200 ballots were affected by turning on that shrink to fit and those ballots were duplicated so that they could be read by a tabulator, but duplicated does not mean doubled. Because those original ballots weren't read by a tabulator, so they tossed those ballots and used the copies in the correct paper. Now there's another person, a pollster, who then also claimed technical problems at polling places, potentially disfranchised about 25,000 to 40,000 voters. Carrie Lake had lost by 17,000. So assuming that seven, at least 17,000 or, or roughly about less than half of those ballots, and we're going with the 40,000, right? The, the, the top range here. Well, if half of them or just over half went to, uh, would have went to Harry Lake, then she would have won. That's their claim. But there's no evidence to prove that 20 to 40,000 people were disenfranchised and that they were all Cary Lake voters or that even half of them were Cary Lake voters. So, so again, there's just no evidence to prove their assertions. Could, it, could a certain number of people have been disenfranchised that were Cary Lake voters? Yes. Could uh, a number of Katie Hobbs voters have been disenfranchised in the same process as well. Yeah, it's possible. But again, if you want uh, to prove your case in a court of law, to remember, have the entire election be done over or just as she was asking for, just make me governor already, then you're going to have to present some real evidence there. And they, and, and sorry, Carrie Lake, her team, her lawyers did not present that evidence to the judge. Again, this is, this is all been adjudicated in court. Thompson had also previously dismissed about eight of the 10 claims. These are the two claims that they allowed uh, into the courtroom. Okay, the judge says, present your evidence. If you've got a claim, so let's go. Let tell us what you're what you're seeing, what you have, and all of it, again, was just basically hearsay from people who thought they. Oh, I think there might be some shenanigans going on. Okay, and show us your proof. And they didn't have it. Among those uh, claims, by the way, that were dismissed by the court were uh, Lake's allegations that Hobbs in her capacity as secretary of state and the Maricopa County recorder, Stephen Ricker or Richer, sorry, engaged in censorship by flagging social media posts with election misinformation for possible removal by Twitter. He also dismissed her claims of discrimination against Republicans and that mail-in voting procedures were illegal. Ah, so, I mean, there it is, right? You had all 10 of those allegations that had gone before a court 
and were either ruled against or just thrown out for lack of evidence. Again, this is the same thing that has happened for all the different court challenges that were pushed by Trump's camp as well after the 2020 election. They were defeated for lack of evidence. Conspiracy theories by themselves are not evidence. Witnesses claiming errors that do happen, but that were uh, they claim were orchestrated for malicious intent, that's not evidence. If anything, it's evidence that our uh, election infrastructure is in bad need of an upgrade. And the fact that you lost is not evidence. Look, it, as much as that works on conservative blogs and TV shows, you know, that the, the, oh, we have a conspiracy theory and we definitely think that somebody on the inside, you know, well, by the way, a, a lot of Republican officials were working as election workers. So, you know, take that for what you will, right? You're just accusing other Republicans of, for somehow trashing the chances of Carrie Lake from becoming governor over, uh, you know, and choosing a Democrat instead, which again, wouldn't make sense if you're a Republican, okay, to let the other side win, um, or not just let the other side win, but to sabotage your own side. No, that doesn't make any sense. Again, when you look into it, it falls apart. But that's all that you would hear in conservative blogs. And if you watch, you know, uh, Channels like Newsmax, One America News. Saying those things on those uh, mediums is one thing, but again, they're not going to hold up in court unless you have some sort of evidence, because apparently court has standards. Standards. And I say they're supposed to have standards because, look, let's be honest, right? Conservatives have, uh, you know, targeted the judiciary. And they've made a lot of judicial appointments. And they filled it with judges who they believe would rule on their side. And in some cases, they do. And in some cases, as we saw with a lot of Trump appointees, they didn't rule on their side. Because they still, yes, even Trump appointed judges and conservative judges, you still have them that are interested in doing their jobs and not promoting conspiracy theories or ruling without facts. Now, again, you have uh, pretty big cases like Judge Cannon, who obviously are incredibly partisan judges. And again, appointed by, Trump, uh, by Trump. Then again, you also have other judges in many different cases uh, and, and jurisdictions that are still saying, look, I don't care that I was appointed by Republicans. I'm here to protect the Constitution and serve the Constitution and rule on the facts. And the facts are, you don't have any evidence of this election conspiracy nonsense that you're peddling. And so we're going to rule against you unless, unless you actually do provide it. 